Thank you all for joining us again. Uh, maybe I will be talking about open source diversity using different flavors of, of uh, DNS in the, in the uh, CentOS infrastructure. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, you want to? <laughs> I wasn't sure which one, which microphone I wanted to use, so at least I can walk in front of you. So the, the, the title itself is just an excuse for me, uh, because in general, our just open source software uh, diversity is really good, but it was just more like an excuse for me to talk about DNS. Uh, just because DNS, nobody is supposed to be boring uh, if you do it correctly. Except that there are still a lot of things to do in the DNS world. And um, uh, the, the idea for that talk is the fact that almost at every event I discuss with people how we run DNS in CentOS Infra, and a lot of people are like, why are you doing this? So it was maybe a good, not a good excuse to give the talk and explain one for all why we use multiple DNS server. And when I say DNS server, it's um, either an authoritative server or just resolver. Uh, or why we have delegation and so on. So that's what we cover. So first, who am I? You probably don't want to know, because if I'm doing my job correctly, you would not notice that I'm there. Uh, meaning that I'm in charge, uh, no, more, more or less, of some part of the CentOS infra, so everything public. Uh, and Brian, is, uh, we have two of the sysadmin team at the moment for CentOS uh, infra, but we are also a sysadmin doing more and more than just sysadmin, so it's including it includes building package, verifying, automating, CI, etc. Uh, so my preferred uh, uh, title is floor, ma floor sweeper at CentOS Develop. So um, as I said, we'll cover DNS usage, and this is what we use so far in the CentOS Develop infra. We use bind, we use power DNS, we use unbound, and well, DNS mask is still listed, but we don't use that uh, a lot, but still, in some places, it's useful to, to have it. So we'll discuss the regional why. We use uh, all those flavors, and how we just uh, maintain or roll out um, those, uh, those DNS implementation uh, through Ansible exclusively. So we just switch everything to Ansible in the CentOS in front. So um, before we dive into details, it's always good to, to, to use the the time travel machine, and go back to when we started the CentOS, uh, CentOS project. So it was a long time ago, uh, 2003, <coughs> say, that the domain was acquired. That we and uh, if you think about 2003, there were not a lot of open source solutions for DNS. The one that was default, and it's probably still the default for a lot of people, was bind, ESC bind. Uh, was the one that uh, everybody was using. So for us, it was like, hey, it's in the distro, it's in CentOS uh, already, so CentOS 3 version, uh, let's use it so that we don't have to, to take care of uh, taking off the next external package to the, to the distribution. And um, in 2003, we started really small, like uh, uh, editing ourselves the zone on the machine and hope for the best. Uh, but of course, we have to, to put that into the context. But when we started to have more people, and when I say more people, that means two instead of one, we decided to use uh, something else. <coughs> so um, the, the history of the CentOS Infra is that we just got everything donated to us. So it was one machine donated by a company, another one. And so we started really small. Um, so that was, that was um, we had just very small changes. And at one point, we decided to move to Puppet. To manage that instead of editing the, the past uh, manually, distribute that to Puppet. Uh, we were using Puppet 0 0.23, if I remember at the time. And um, we were using Subversion. Who is enough, or who is all enough in the room to remember Subversion? Great. So, for the rest of the room, there was something before Git, clearly. <laughs> or even before Subversion, but that's yes. we, can, we can discuss that over a beer if you want. So, that's what we use. Um, back in the days. So the current situation is that uh, we're still <coughs> using BIND for the main CentOS um, uh, zone. Uh, but we have we added more zone, uh, sometimes just as a subzone. 
we use uh, the everything is running on CentOS 7 in the CentOS Intrad moment. We, I'm just evaluating you, so deploying CentOS 8. But we were more busy uh, building it and testing it than having a chance to even deploy it out in the Infra. In so far, so everything is CentOS 7 except two machine, uh, still CentOS 6, everything is CentOS 7. So no secrets, we use the, the CH, CH root version of mine uh, on our uh, Linux server. Um, we switch from Puppet to Ansible, but it's the same principle as for Puppet that, that manage centrally. Um, so we can see who did the commit and, and push it. We just decide, uh, because of our need to um, have some uh, uh, delegation for some, car, some, some other subdomains of zone, uh, like apps.ci, that's set of so <coughs> Ryan is responsible for that. So in CI, we have an OpenShift setup in place, and you know that when you deploy an application in OpenShift, it will create automatically the roots based on the application name. Uh, so we wanted to have something like easy, uh, just a wildcard for that, and uh, it goes straight. Um, it's, it's available as soon as you publish the application, you push the application in the bottom of OpenShift. So that's um, how it goes. So we went through, through multiple variants of bind, uh, and we never had any, any problem. Um, but something that we did recently was um, a specific case. Who is using Let's Encrypt in the room? I guess a lot. Who is using HTTP challenge? So for validation, only one. Who is the, who's using DNS challenge for the certificates? Not that much. Um, that's what we, um, we did. Um, recently I had a look at uh, how we could uh, automate the certificate from Let's Encrypt uh, through Bind. Well, through DNS challenges and so we find. Um, because for Acme v1, a lot of people are just doing uh, HTTP challenge. <coughs> and then we have something new with Acme version 2 for one card certificate through this encrypt, and it's only through DNS challenge. So for the CentOS infra, what I did in the past, so I'll just explain how we did it before. It was more or less like this. Uh, if you want the whole story, I have my, still, my own blog post is still valid for HTTP challenge. I didn't want to have, um, it was a self bot client, well, let's encrypt the client, now it's called a self bot client, on every machine in the infra, uh, because I still wanted to have that central managed by configuration management. Everything has to come from a single place. And it's certainly interesting uh, when, for example, you have multiple machines behind the same host name, the same public host name. Because if you are using uh, the self bot client, you use the, the original Acme server. The Acme server will get back to, to your server, but if I am, you know the um, .acme, well known slash Acme challenge and expect your string to validate that you are who you say you are, you don't know which one it will hit back. Because if you have 60 machines with the same name, you don't know which one. And I didn't want you to, to, to do that on one basis. So uh, it was in 2016, and I thought about let's do that centrally. And let's just use uh, redirection, because Acme will follow the redirection. So in fact, it was possible to, from one place, ask for a certificate, and the certificate will end on the same machine and going through a redirection for, uh, through Apache, or just proxy pass in Apache, or just for that specific uh, URI. And it worked, so, worked, it worked well for us so far. It was easy enough. But still, um, as I mentioned before, um, we wanted to use wildcard certificate, um, and the only way to do it was through DNS challenges. But I still wanted to reuse the same principle, <coughs> uh, do that automatically from one place and not have to type anything uh, anywhere. So I had a look at some of the clients that support that, and there is that, that one, um, sh, which is really a shell script, but it's not a small one. Uh, that support that. So the client itself supports HTTP challenges, but also DNS um, uh, challenges, and support CNAME. So the way uh, we were doing that through HTTP challenge was just getting to the host, to the HTTP, <coughs> that was redirecting to a central machine, if you remember the previous diagram. I wanted to use the same thing, and that tool is exactly doing that. Um, Acme V2 support that. So you can ask for um, a specific DNS challenge, so you know how it works with DNS challenge, the same way with HTTP. Um, Acme expect you in the DNS zone to have a specific record, which is a TXT record with a string, just to validate that you are effectively um, 
uh, what we pretend to be. But they also follow some kind of, of, of directing, in the sense of DNS, just a senior, just a DNS alias. And it support, they support that. So the, the idea that I had in mind, which was still a part, but now turned to fruition, was uh, to still have the main center of the rogue static. So just using virtual control and gates, deploy, have some record being pre-populated in that zone, being just CNAME to another uh, DNS sub zone, which is, oh my god, what's the name? <coughs> Acme.center.org, which exists. And that one is dynamic. Dynamic and uh, is controlled by Acme.sh, so it's automatically updating uh, the zone on request. So Acme can't touch the main center of the world, but um, the Acme server will just uh, it's that one to validate, to validate um, um, the, 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 the string is correct for Acme challenge. So that's how you would do it, for example, <coughs> uh, for a um, multiple subject alternate, alternate name for the client. Um, here's a fake example because I'm not using it for the main center of the row, uh, zone, but it would work. Uh, you can request multiple one. And the interesting thing is that you have the dash dash DNS, Meaning, I want a DNS challenge, and the one after that is DNS NS update. So, meaning that you will just use the NS update mechanism from a bind, so with an RMDC key. Uh, Acme.sh support plenty of uh, DNS providers, so if you are uh, using uh, Amazon Root 53 or Cloudflare or, or PowerDNS, they have plenty of, um, of way, but it supports also DNS through the simple NS update mechanism with the RMDC key. And the other thing that it support is that uh, I want you to request for request for center of the road, but the challenge alias will be that one. So you know that you are requesting that, but you should update that zone instead. And when Acme is just verifying, it's follow the C name and it, it ends up verifying the one in Acme of the road, and it's automatic. And the good thing is that it works also for the wildcard. So the same way, you just have to request the wildcard, and it works. Uh, it works just fine. And the proof that it works is that if you have a look at some of the nodes we have at the moment in the center of Sinfra, we wanted to use a wildcard for basically dev, so start of dev the center of the node. It's actually a wildcard that we get renewed automatically through the same process, through DNS challenge. Uh, and um, the idea was that uh, Brian or me or someone in the team could just have something published quickly and have automatically the certificate would be working fine without having to deal with um, uh, the DNS uh, other. So, so it's, it's really interesting to, to use, and uh, not a lot of people are using that. I don't know if some people in the room are already using uh, such kind of DNS update for like, uh, DNS challenge for Acme. Some people are. Great. I'm, I'm not the only one, so that's good. So, if you just want to have a look at that tool, um, these are the, 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 the GitHub, and so uh, including the tooling, so the DNS API, where they explain all the DNS providers that they support, and also the DNS alias mode, which is really interesting when you want to segregate uh, your main room being uh, main zone being uh, static, and um, the, uh, the the other zone where you, you allow that DNS uh, key to to update the zone. So I said that they support plenty of uh, provider. One of the reasons we wanted to use that also is when you don't fully control, you don't have a way to request certificate from where uh, the, the, the main traffic is coming from. I have something in mind. Um, I guess that everybody in the room follow uh, the build of CentOS 8 and CentOS Stream publicly. So we have koji.mbox.centos.ro, which is an AG proxy in front of uh, an open shift setup that Brian uh, put together just to build it. And, uh, the certificate that we use inside OpenShift is not the one that we expose publicly, externally. And so mm -hmm. that was one way to do, to do that. And it's not request from OpenShift, it was just through DNS challenge in the front end. So we just chain DHA proxy with different certificates, um, and it was working fine. That was just for bind. But I said that we are using more than just bind. We use PowerDNS. So I don't know if some people in the room are familiar with PowerDNS. Um, some are, yes, it's really, really great. Um, Bobo Linux itself is not a package that you will find by default in CentOS uh, or RHEL. 
release package in Ava it's available in uh, Apple repository. Uh, for mFlow, we just rebuilt that and signed the package to just reuse that. And um, I should, for you, same thing again, I should <coughs> use the, the time travel machine to explain why. Remember when I said that we started really small with one, two machine, three machine related to us? We decided to use that as far as middle machine mainly, so middle that sent us the road. Um, we wanted to really back the people with some kind of logic in behind. It's not like we wanted to use a uh, round robin. Because you don't want suddenly someone from Asia having to go to a machine in the US or someone from Europe going to a machine in Australia. That's not going to work. So round robin is really great if you want to use that in a, on site, uh, in the same DC, etc. But not if you are spread uh, all around the world. So we needed to uh, do something something else to redirect through DNS uh, to the nearest mirror that we had in that location, if possible. And so we wanted to control our own logic for that, because we knew exactly what we had at our disposal. So uh, that's the reason why um, we have some role being delegate, uh, delegated to um, PADNS. So some roles like mirror, the center road, uh, building logs, the center road, vault, debugging for some of the public roles we have are at the moment delegated completely to PADNS for that reason. And um, the reason is, um, PowerDNS can be really, really flexible. Uh, PowerDNS supports plenty of backends. So on its own, it supports um, database. So it can be MySQL, it can be SQLite, it can be, I think, LMDB recently. Um, plenty of. And one that was really interesting is yours. They support um, a pipe backend. So you don't want to be in a situation where you just invent, invent another flavor of DNS. Nobody wants to write your own DNS self implementation. You just rely on something like Power DNS. But still, Power DNS can use in the back end something that is your own logic when you know exactly your infra. So we started with that. So there's a link for Power DNS. The example that they have there is just Perl based. And initially we started with that. I'm not responsible for the, the first implementation in Perl. Uh, because yeah, back in, back in the time it was written in 2004, 2005, so a long time ago. Um, I re-injected the logic um, last year to, change, to switch that to Python and something more flexible. Uh, because the example that we had in Perl was um, clearly the raw logic of all the IP address in our region that we had, so it was really something not to be exposed publicly. I mean, I, I wanted to, 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 um, to switch that, the logic, uh, the logic in the code, but the, the data from outside so that we can uh, update when we need it. So the logic for that is, it's still, we still use the Py backend, but switch to Python. And um, in some central place, basically where we have our monitoring setup, we just uh, have an extra table that contains all the role that we have. And with all the information, the, the continent, the country, um, uh, the, the middle, the role that the machine support, like is it the middle, what center of the machine, is that a build log machine, whatever. And um, we just flag that. And uh, as soon as something happens, as soon as we get a new machine donated to us, it's uh, entered into the, DB, uh, the database. Or as soon as there is a problem, Zabbix will trigger a state change uh, in the, the, the table. And it will automatically reproduce the, just a, a simple JSON file, uh, nothing really fancy. The only thing is that from central place we just GPG encrypted, and all on all the PDNS uh, machine, uh, it detects that it, uh, there is a new version of the JSON backend, it reloads that into memory, and it's live. So how it works? Uh, something really simple. The structure is, of course, uh, everything is explained here. If you want to have a look. Uh, by the way, I'm not a coder, I'm not a developer, I'm a citizen, so if you see awful things in Python code, you can just, you can just throw things at me. Um, but so far it seems to work. Um, so the structure is really easy, like, for example, assume that we have Mirror, and then we have Africa, and then we have a list of IPv4 and IPv6 for that role, and say for every continent, and we go like this for uh, all the role infra and uh, all the roles we have. So, uh, so far so good, and it's still really light, so 
So I think that at this stage, that's the only one solution that permits to have you uh, to, to have something as flexible and inject your own logic. Uh, so Paulinus is really great. And they are also great people. If you just want to talk to them, uh, they have always uh, good advice, so it's really good. So bind and borrow DNS. But still, I mentioned unbound. Why unbound? So we don't want to use unbound for because it's not uh, authoritative server, it's just a resolver. And we use that as a resolver uh, in multiple places. The reason is that it's really lightweight, it's really fast uh, as a caching server. And it has <coughs> a good feature about uh, security and privacy like DOT. So I guess everybody knows DOT, so DNS over TLS. There's a huge thread about privacy and encrypting the DNS traffic these days. A lot of people are mentioning DO, so DNS over HTTPS, which is the one from your browser directly. Here I'm talking about DOT, really the one that is supposed to happen at the system level, so system wide. Uh, so I could take the DNS traffic over TLS. Um, Unbound support that out of the box. Uh, but it has also something that we abuse a lot in the central sim <coughs> That's the specific support of a ride. So assume that you are in one place, in one VLAN or DC, you just say, okay, I just I don't want to replicate the zone from that domain, but I just want specific record for that domain to be something else. And for the rest, I will just forward the request to the, uh, the upstream authoritative server. You can do that with Unbound really easily. So with record override, that is an example. Uh, that is really an example that we have used a lot in the CentOS CI environment and also in the CentOS storage infra for the build system. We, uh, by default, if you install CentOS, the YAML repository configuration will just use mirror list. So it's still our own code. But we don't even want to, 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 to use that process because we know that we have internal mirror in the DC and we just want transparently to redirect there. So we just use DNS uh, override to just say, no, no, don't go outside. Uh, just go to that machine. And if you want to read something for mirror, that's another one, go to that machine. So, and if you request for something else, it will use the real record that we have in the center of the zone outside. So that is really something that we are abusing uh, a lot. Um, just a disclaimer, because when I mentioned that, some people say, yeah, but you can do that with bind. True. Uh, bind support that through what is called a response policy zone. The good news is that we support that also in the Ansible role we have. So in the bind role we have for centers, we support uh, response policy zone and also multiple response policy zone for the same zone, but with different views. So if you are familiar with the views in bind, if the request is coming from a specific subnet, you can answer something. If it's coming from a subnet, you respond to something very different. And you can combine both views and OPZ uh, response policy zone in mind. But so far, we just use uh, Unbound because it permits us to have something really fast. At the moment, um, what I showed in the previous slide is just a small Jinja to template with Ansible. So when we just add temporary machine dynamically, um, Provision new machine, for example, it's automatically a member of a group in Ansible, and we have the role for, bound un for Unbound <coughs> automatically watching the IP address and creating everything on the fly for us, so we don't have to, to take care of or pushing anything it's done automatically. Um, of course, for Unbound, for uh, the machine that are outside, so not inside, but outside, and we still want to control, uh, we don't want to have those uh, resolver being public resolver. We don't want to, so they need to be listed as a new 8.8.8.8. Uh, so we firewall everything through, and it's coming from the same Ansible inventory. Uh, so we firewall, we can uh, use those machines, uh, both at the IP level and also in the access control list in the Unbound uh, config file itself. Something I would like to have time to work on is clearly enable DOT for some of uh, this um, uh, encryption. Uh, I just had a quick look, but I would like to really intensively test it. Uh, so far, as a client, there is a study, uh, which is already packaged, that can be used as a kind of proxy on your machine, just to do that and encrypt uh, automatically, and you just give it the name of an upstream uh, unbound uh, TLS, uh, TLS server. <laughs> Or system DMZOP, uh, but on CentOS 7, we don't have the version high enough 
to be the only optimal case attribution we have remain set of eight. Uh, I should remove it by that when I will test the, the raw Ansible baseline raw uh, in the new project. <coughs> so that was for unbound. Um, last but not least, DNS mask. So I guess that uh, a lot of people know DNS mask because you are probably using it without even noticing. As soon as you have GNOME desktop and you have, for example, a GNOME box installed on your laptop, it's using Libre uh, on the machine, and Libre is by default using DNS mask for everything. So it's all in one, DHCP, TLTP, and DNS. And that's uh, what we used initially when we started CI, uh, because it was easy to have something really small just to, to, to bootstrap the CI in front. Uh, but we discussed with Brand and we'd like to modernize that a little bit because the only problem we have with DNS mask is that if you start small, it's fine. On your laptop, it's really good. To a certain amount of machine, it's really good. Uh, because it was easy to, to push the machine and also push DNS. But DNS mask doesn't obey really, it doesn't do really a lot of caching. So unbound is really great because it has, it's really a resolver with caching. DNS mask doesn't, so the time to live is always zero. Meaning that every big machine asking the same thing is producing a lot of DNS traffic out again and back and forth. So, uh, it's not really efficient if suddenly you have multiple machines being reinstalled all the time for CI testing. Um, I should have a look, or maybe I can ask Brian or Vinpol, but I think that last year we mentioned more than 500,000 physical reinstallation of CentOS in CI. So the number is probably higher now. So I'll let you imagine the number of DNS traffic we have just in that part of the zone. So yeah, I think it's probably a better fit for, for that environment. And um, that's how we did on the last slide. So if you are interested, if you have a question or, or just are curious about how we just deploy that, um, everything is there. So uh, when we switch everything to Ansible, we put all the roles directly uh, so that you can have a look and really contribute through those requests, why not? For buying PDNS 5 and um, Android. And I think I was faster than expected, so it's already the question and answer section. So if you have questions, eventually I can have answers. Yes? A bit first. Um, speaking about the corrugated name servers, you described using both Bind and PowerDNS. Um, PowerDNS has the property that you can change it easily, or uh, well, a lot of other things into it. What's the feature set that Bind provides is the other part of that, why not uh, standardize on uh, using PowerDNS for everything? That's, that's in fact a good question. Uh, we thought about this um, when, because we were using, so we started with Bind, and then we switched to PowerDNS because someone said, oh, that's great to have that delegation. Um, we could, we could eventually just switch to uh, everything to PowerDNS, except that we would have to maintain multiple variants of PowerDNS. Because if you configure PowerDS with a buy backend, it's for everything. <coughs> so we don't want to, it's a specific use case that we have for, um, with the logic of specific role. The rest, we still wanted to have some kind of static zone, so in the Git repository, uh, with, um, we did the change, and we don't expect a lot of change in those zones. Um, but it's true, we, we thought about using power, um, switching everything to PowerDS, uh, at least for the authoritative server. The only difference is that Bind, we, let's say, get it for free in the sense that we rebuild it automatically. Uh, so if the new version coming in the distribution, we automatically benefit from it. For power DNS, it's not. So we have actually to track, to track it and rebuild it, which I do. It's not a, a huge deal. Um, but still, it's, it's uh, something useful. But yeah, it's a valid point. But on the other side, because we have automated that, there is nothing wrong with, with it either. So that's why I, I, want, I want to yeah. mention it's open. Diversity is good because you can just use what is best in all the solution and combine all that together. But, um, because the, the, the way you would do the, the delegation with uh, uh, Act 3, that's a good question because now it's, it's, it would work. Uh, PowerDNS support also the delegation <coughs> and, um, and the Act made of SH tool support PowerDNS update. Yeah. So it would be possible, yes. Okay. It's just that at the moment it runs and uh, I don't have any incentive to to, to switch it back well, to the uh, Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, you know, we are engineering, we like to have multiple, multiple, multiple tools just to, to do the same thing, just because we like to test okay. those. <laughs> yeah? I mean, do you use any IP AM solution for also for infrastructure? 
What do you mean by oh, the question is do we use IP AM? So what do you mean yeah, by IP AM? IP address management solution. Um, do you have something in mind? Like IP yeah, IP AM PHP or no. PHP AM. So so we, we don't use any of these because um, ninety percent of the infra is donated to us from various place. So we don't control which kind of IP we have. It's just like we we have, for example, packet.net wanted to give us two machine, we just rely on packet.net. We have a, another company sponsoring a machine, so we don't manage ourselves the IP. We just get what we get as donated, as donated to the project. The only thing that we manage is what we have in Red Hat DC for a CI in the whole system. So we have an internal thing for that, but um, it's not automatically reflected into uh, into a simple at the moment. Okay, but in any case, you have to manage. Uh, the both forward zones and reverse zones. So, as you know, if you have uh, free uh, the IP pool, it's it's uh, still free of uh, IP addresses or not. Oh, okay. So um, for that, just internal path, our uh, brain we just share uh, something, um, and we reflect that automatically in Ansible. So in Ansible, every, the, the logic is that Ansible is a source of proof for everything because it's already it's it's Ansible at the, uh, automatically building the, the zone file for us for everything internal. As well. So there is there are two paths. One is what is sent to the road publicly. The other is the internally. So how we abuse the resource internally. Um, so for that part, we use something. For the rest, it's just like we go for the rest and see what uh, what we, we, we ended up for. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it, fun fact, um, we have a lot of relationships with a lot of sponsors. You know that I'm getting just an IPv6 even. In, 2020 is difficult, so people are not ready for that. I don't get it, but still, so it's really difficult to have dual stack a machine even now. Mm. So I don't even know what they are, they are using to only just to do their own management of IP addresses. Right. Any other question? Going once, things once, going twice. Thank you.